Hi guys and girls, people, um, people from not Earth or this frequency or domain, welcome. Because I never know who all is watching, so hopefully it's everybody who, um, you know, it's not just limited to old, us old earthlings. Um, today is January 9th. It's my good friend Marie Bramum Lee's birthday. I've known her since she was five, so shout out to Marie. Happy birthday. I love you. Um, so my last video, um was about my dog. It was a bunch of things. My mind was just racing and I was getting out a bunch of information that was coming to me a um, little bit at a time. So as I was getting that information, I was just telling you, sharing it with you. Um, first of all, before I forget, uh, I wanted to thank each and every one of you for watching the video and if you're subscribed I appreciate my um, subscribers very very much and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe um, it would help me out a, a lot because to monetize this at all I have to get like I think it says 10,000 subscribers so um, I have high hopes of that I have 27 right now it's so my lucky number hopefully it'll be like 27,000 in a couple months so if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing and sharing with your social media, friends and family, I would really appreciate it. Um, so, thank you, first of all, before I forget, because sometimes when I'm getting um, thoughts and things coming into my head, uh, I'm you know kind of all over the place with little bits of information of all sorts. So this channel is mainly about my evolution, your evolution, it's about evolution of self and the, self and the collective. Um, because when I evolve, you evolve, and when you evolve, I evolve. So everybody who's evolving in a positive way is helping the collective evolve. It's helping all of us. So thank you for everybody for um, having, keeping in the heart, um, being loving, forgiving, patient, all of those good things that, um, you know, are essential to our evolution as human beings. Um, so, oh, and my videos, um, I don't edit them because I don't feel the need, because I am imperfect, and I make mistakes, I can't think of the word at the time and it's okay I don't care because I'm not perfect and so I want to come across to you as real as you are so anyway um, so my um, videos are not edited oh by the way um, I have these beautiful earrings I got for like $15 in um, Savannah several months ago and they're by they're made with organite and if you haven't heard of um, Organite, check it out. It has great properties. And um, I learned about it through a Facebook friend who had sent me a private message about Organite. And I was like, what is this? And it's pretty amazing. It's like my favorite thing. And it's you can make Organite. Um, and I don't like this part, but oh, well, that's me. Anyway. <laughs> Um, the more I get in shape, this little chicken stuff will go away. So, it is what it is. I haven't been even eating healthy lately, and I've just been kind of surviving on um, healthy junk food, if you want to call it that. Healthy junk food meaning like organic ice cream. Um, food that's either GMO-free or organic, but it's still unhealthy, you know. But, it's better than GMO or high fructose or trans fat, but... Still, bottom line, I haven't been eating healthy um, because I was talking about um, I have a weight loss idea plan. And um, so I figured once, you know, when the holidays were over and everything, 
holiday wise and now my anniversary is coming up on the 11th my three year anniversary with my husband Ronald and um, he actually has a channel too called the Ronald Show uh, 2011 I believe and we also have videos together on his channel before I decided to passionately share with you my trials and tribulations of life um, evolution and just stuff in general so um, someone could find something that resonated with what I'm saying in their lives and ultimately that's why I have this channel is to let you all know that you're not alone you're never alone even though it feels like it sometimes I mean I've had some bouts lately of feeling really alone and it's not because of anything that friends or family haven't done it's for my own issues and I'll get to that um, in a few minutes so I can share with you what's been going on um, anyway this organite look it up it's it's great stuff um, especially if you can get it in a pyramid pyramids have special uh, properties and qualities if you get an organite pyramid uh, it's great I think I just ordered a um, a specific organite a little tiny one pyramid it was like 17 bucks and I cannot wait to get it because I'm going to be carrying it you know on my person all the time I also have some um, special like stones on me gems and stuff and quartz and stuff and I keep them in my pocket hopefully I don't lose them I was carrying them in my purse my little tiny purse that I take everywhere I'm not a big purse person because I don't think it's necessary I might leave a purse in the car and then have a, just a little pack to take you know if I'm running an errand or whatnot and that's where my little kind of talisman if I find any money on the ground like a dime or a penny or whatever I put that in there and that's like my little talisman to bring more um, more money and more manifesting more wealth to me and uh, yesterday I think I found a nickel and a penny I found a dime yesterday in the uh, washing machine so that went into my purse my little purse but anyway I always carry my little stones and I can actually show them to you um, I'm a big fan of like little eclectic stores that are like mis mystical stores and they always have these little these little um, specific gems or um, stones that you can buy and they each have different properties depending on what they are made of um, this is my green one whoops it's really pretty I like how they feel too they're really s smooth and I just love them this one I have no idea where I got it but it's smooth too and I like it so I just consider it you know good luck and it brings me um, peace and whatever if it's you know some of the qualities properties are um, it keeps you protected from negative um, entities or feelings um, some are you know protect you against par parasites all kinds of stuff um, some of them help with clearing of your chakras, some are third eye opening so you become more intuitive, all kinds of stuff. This is another one, if you can see it. It's pretty. And these are cheap, you know, they're like two, three, four dollars, depending on where you get it and what size. I think this is a hematite. Isn't that cool? You know, they're like mirrors, they're really cool. I think that's it. So I have like five of them and I keep them in my pocket today. You know, sometimes I don't have a pocket and I can't carry them around with me. But today, I needed all the help I could have. Need, I need all the help I can with um, positive energy and just good flow of energy in my organite earrings. And I even uh, can't wear these earrings long because they bother me. They hurt my ears, um, my ear holes because... I guess I have to have kind of real gold or something or they get like infected easily. My, my daughter's the same way. So I've learned to get like um, Neosporin or Polysporin or whatever. And I poke the, um, the little post into the Neosporin and then I put it in my ear and I can go for hours and it doesn't bother me. My ears don't hurt. So that's a little tidbit if you have some sensitive ears, um, earring holes. So that's just a little bit of info. Um, so, I also have a Patreon channel, and I haven't done much with it, but once I get some subscribers to that, I'm going to have more in-depth, um, you know, 
information for you guys and so I'm just waiting to get that done. I have a lot of stuff on my plate right now and little by little I'm getting it done. Um, last time we talked I had my doggie outside and she was really bad, really sick. My dog Haley, my best friend I've had for 14 and a half plus oh, my hair, plus years and um, the last six months or so she's had a lot of pancreatitis issues and hi puppy that's my little um, my mother-in-law's dog just Maltese he's so cute anyway so the last six eight months actually probably a year she has needed a lot more care than usual so I've been I'm depleted in sleep. Um, come here. I've had, you know, a lot of time needed to help her. You know, if she was sick, if she had to go out, had to go out a lot. You know, I made her the priority. I used to take her in Denver when we lived there. I took her in her stroller. She has a a stroller that's a baby stroller because they're made better. And I had a dog stroller, and it was really flimsy and small, and she couldn't lay down in it. So I got this dog dog stroller for half price. It was like twelve fifty at um one of those mutt stores or it's a thrift store and you buy a little five five dollar wood nickel and on Saturdays I think it's like half price everything in the store. So I got her that um, a couple years ago. But anyway, I used to take her for walks in her stroller because she didn't want to walk a lot and she would do like little bursts of chasing this giant soft BMO frisbee type thing and she would play monkey in the middle and uh, with my husband and I and she just loved it she would play to exhaustion and she'd take a break and she'd get cool if it was summer and then a few minutes later she'd be up again chasing it and then she also loved um, chasing the laser pointer like for cats she loved that inside but if there, there was no carpet she would slip and slide all over the floor so, kind of um, had to keep her on the carpet there, or, you know, couldn't play much unless she had a carpet. Anyway, um, unfortunately, Sunday, she had, she had been declining quickly, like she stopped eating. And, you know, I've grown up with animals for my entire life. And I know when a pet stops eating and drinking, they kind of know that they're dying. And... But, you know, with Haley, she was a Shetland sheepdog. And I apologize if I get emotional and start crying because the last week I have been bawling off and on. I'm so tired of crying. But anyway, um, so she stopped eating and drinking. Not for a long period of time with the drinking, because I know you can only live a couple days without water. So she drank a little bit um, Saturday evening early, and then she didn't have anything to drink until I kind of forced her. I had a little um, dropper from some C60 I had, and I gave her a tiny bit in the side of her mouth just to hydrate her a little bit, and because her pee was very dark. And so... She hadn't eaten anything in two days, and I had some of these bacon treats, and they were kind of hard, so I cut them all up into little bites, and she ate it, because she hadn't eaten. She didn't want anything, and she ate four of those, and I was so happy, and Haley bounced back. Every time she's been ill, you know, with pancreatitis or whatever, she would bounce back. She would have bouts of diarrhea for, you know, days at a time, and I'd have to give her antibiotic, and... Um, and then that would, you know, kill her good bacteria in her gut. And then, um, you know, I'd give her silver water to help. And, um, I would give her, she loved having, um, probiotic pills. She would, like, eat it like it was candy to us. Anyway, she always bounced back. And, um, this time she didn't. She got where she was sleeping a lot. And she got up. Um, the other day and she kind of lost her balance and the way she was walking I was thinking 
there's something neurological going on. She either had a stroke or something happened to her. And so I had to hold her up, you know, so she could drink. And she'd, you know, try to walk. And then all of a sudden her legs would fall out from underneath her, of her. And it was really sad. And I thought, oh, you know, she going to, is it because she's just super weak from having not eaten or drink? And so, you know, I still thought that there might be hope after she ate Sunday morning of four of those little baby treats, dog treats. And she did drink a little bit. And my Haley loved to go outside. She loved to be outside. And when she was sick, or not even sick, but when she was sick, she just wanted to keep going outside. And she wanted to... I apologize. Um, sorry. So she wanted to go outside. And, um, you know, when it was really cold, and I thought, I can't let her go outside when it's freezing like this. So... I said, as soon as it gets warm, I'm going to, you know, warmer, I'm going to take her out. I took her out a couple times for hours when it was kind of chilly, you know, and held her on my lap, on my chair for hours, and she actually fell asleep in my lap, which was so amazing because Haley was not a lap dog. She didn't like to be held much, and yet she was independent that way, but in another way she was dependent because she always wanted to be where I was, so... You know, she was a very independent puppy. And um, anyway, so I took her out. And um, Sunday, after a while, she couldn't even stand up. And she just laid there, sleeping, kind of in and out of consciousness, maybe. And it was heartbreaking. And I knew that the time was drawing near, that I needed to do something. But I was just devastated. I... I didn't know what I was going to do. It was Sunday afternoon around 4. And so this kind lady next door, she came over and she said, uh, she said, you know, Banfield has, um, they're able to take her and they charge a certain amount. And she asked me if I wanted her to call. And I said, sure. And they, you know, go through the process and, so my only dilemma was, Haley hated going to the vet. So my dilemma was, you know, if she's not suffering, kind of, I wanted her to pass quickly and peacefully without having to take her to the vet. And yet it was Sunday. So if she would have gotten really bad and started being a lot of pain um, in that time overnight on Sunday, I didn't want... I didn't want her to go through that and suffer, so I had to make the most difficult decision to take her to Banfield, and I tell you, I was a mess. I was bawling. My daughter took me. My daughter was like in second grade, I think, when we got Haley, and so it was really emotional for her because she just lost Haley's non-biological sister last year to um, cancer. So, oh, I'm telling you, anybody who loses a family member, it's a pet, who is a family member, um, I'm with you. I know how it feels, and it, it's hell. Sorry. It's, it's hell. Knowing that I'm the one who had to ultimately make that choice to not let her suffer. And she, I don't believe she was suffering at all. Um, but what kind of quality of life? She wouldn't have lived, first of all. She probably wouldn't have lived another night. And she was fading fast. So um, <sighs> we made the difficult decision to... Um, they took her and they put in this little catheter. It's a hub. So when they put the medicine in to go to sleep... Then they put the medicine in to make her pass away. And they brought her back, and she seemed so alert and awake. And But when they took her in, she was kind of out of it. And I thought I felt so bad because I knew that that probably hurt to put the little catheter in her. And I knew she hated the vet. <sighs> but I'm a wimp, and I've never been able to even be, be in the room when she had a 
vet appointment because I just couldn't handle it. I'm a wimp that way. Even though I went to CMA school, I realized that wasn't for me. Anywho, um, so then I had that decision of do I say goodbye? Like I had said goodbye to Haley, excuse me, probably for 50 times and we had our goodbyes and I told her how much I loved her so many times. But in the final moment, you know, they put the little hub in her and they had it wrapped. So whenever I was ready and we were ready to say goodbye, then all they had to do was have her lay down and give her the meds. And um, this is difficult for me because I had a choice either to be there when they did it or to leave while she was alive. And I'm feeling really guilty because... I told her goodbye, and in my mind, I wanted to leave her. In my mind, how I saw her was alive. I couldn't, in the, in the moment, I couldn't watch her die in front of me, at my hands, at my, you know, my decision, and so, I told her goodbye, and she looked at me, and, you know, as I was going out, I know they gave her her med, the meds to make her fall asleep, and it was instant, so there was probably 30 seconds there where I, I feel guilty, that I, like I should have stayed, but I mentally couldn't, I wanted to be there, and see her to her last, being alive, <laughs> and, um, I feel bad for that because she wasn't, I wasn't there with her the last 30 seconds when they gave her medicine to put her to sleep, but I know I have to forgive myself because that's what I did in the moment for me to cope. And I've apologized to Haley and told her I was sorry. Anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know that this video is dedicated to Haley's Comet 5, which is her AKC name. And um, my Haley, my sweet, never ever a problem dog. She's never been a problem. She's been like the best, best dog I could have ever had. And I'm done. Like, I don't think I could ever have another pet because I can't. I can't go through that pain again. I'm still I'm still feeling it and it's only been since Sunday and today's Tuesday. And um I just felt so alone, like I lost my best friend. You know, she depended on me all the time and now I just have all this, you know, time and in an instant, I'll forget. I'll think, oh, well, we have to prepare to take her with us. Because we took her everywhere. We went in the car with her. She was an ESA animal, so I had a tag for her. We took her in her stroller to the mall. We've taken her to restaurants. We've taken her to the movies. She's gone to the beach in um, in um, Venice Beach. It, at 12 years old, she got to first first time going to the beach. And then that year was the first time she got to see snow. And um, she really lived. So this is dedicated to her. I love you, Haley, and I, I will miss you forever. Um, so that's about all for today because I've been, like, babbling on for 25 minutes. So thank you again for listening to me. And know that you're not alone. Even if you feel like it, you're not. And um, love and peace to you all. And um, leave a message. Say hi if you'd like. I'd love to hear from you and get some good feedback. All right. Have a, a wonderful rest of your week. And um, peace and love to you all. Thank you.